Hello and welcome to an Edexcel IGCSE ICT past paper question. As promised, this is the 2020 paper. This is paper one. So let's take a look. This is the theory paper. This is the written paper and the total marks are out of 100. There's plenty of advice here to read through carefully. Read the question carefully. As we go through the paper, we'll make sure to bear that in mind. Now, it is really important that you read when you get your exam paper that you read this case study very, very carefully, you understand what that is all about because all the questions will be based on it. So here we've got a family with two children using digital devices in their daily lives. So it's important to maybe make a note that Sashini and Ashan are the adults and Kazuni and Ashan are the children there. So that will obviously affect any questions that you've got in terms of usage. So we're straight into question one then. Sajini shops online for a new laptop. Give two advantages of shopping online rather on the, on the high street. So I've really gone for the convenience angle here. And I've said shopping online can be done anywhere at any time. So you don't need to get in your car and go to the shops. You can do it anywhere at any time. Even if it's late at night, you can do shopping. And I've tried to make the second point slightly different rather than sort of a variation on the convenience theme by saying maybe I don't need to travel save time i tried to make it completely different because i really want to max out my marks here make sure the examiner isn't just thinking i'm just writing a variation of the first point so the second point i've written is that Sajini can compare prices on other retailer sites which so you can do a price comparison b which one of these uses magnetic media is it solid state disc flash flash disc hard disc or optical it is, of course, the hard disk. That's the only one that uses magnetic media. Is the hard disk, nothing else. C. Sashini cannot access Wi-Fi. Name one type of mobile connectivity that Sashini could use to access the internet. Well, if she cannot access the Wi-Fi, then she's going to be using, of course, 3 or 4G. And you can see I've written my answer there. Mobile 3, 4G connectivity. D. The amount of RAM in a computer can be increased. Explain one benefit to the user of increasing the amount of RAM. Right. RAM, what you need to know about RAM is that it's faster than the hard drive. In terms of kind of hierarchy, you have the CPU, then you have cache, then you have RAM, then you have the hard drive. And that is in terms of speed and how close it is to the CPU. RAM is closer to the CPU than the hard drive. RAM is a faster type of storage than the hard drive. What will happen is if you don't have enough RAM in your computer and you're running loads of applications, you'll notice that the computer slows right down. And the reason for that is that it's starting to use virtual memory. It will start to use your hard drive. A section of your hard drive is virtual memory, which is slower than RAM. So you'll notice that your computer will slow down or in some cases it will completely grind to a halt and be incredibly frustrating to use. So with this question, what we really want to be saying is some technical detail there, okay? We don't want to be saying, oh, I've got lots of RAM and my computer will run smoother and faster. That, that won't get you three marks. So let's write our benefit down and then our explanation. Now, a lot of students wouldn't be able to get past that. They understand that having lots of RAM will make your computer run more smoothly or faster, but they won't understand why. So to get the three marks, we really need to say why, what is happening there? Why, what's that all about? Now, RAM is a faster access type of storage than the hard drive. When RAM runs out due to many applications being open, I've just noticed my typo there, the computer will use virtual memory. This is slower than RAM. Now that is really enough. I don't really need to say what virtual memory is. Perhaps, um, perhaps I need to add to that, which is storage on the hard drive. This is slower than RAM. This is only two marks, so we don't really want to be writing loads. It's not a four mark question. I mean, that is probably too much, but that brings home the point and that kind of maxes out my marks here. I know I'm definitely going to get three marks for that. So what you need to understand is having lots of RAM means that when your, compute, your computer is less likely to run out of RAM and less likely to use the hard drive, which is slower which is on which virtual memory is placed. And that answers question D1, three marks. Two, one characteristic of RAM is that it can be increased. Describe how two other characteristics of RAM 
and RAM affect their use. So the first one, RAM is volatile, meaning the contents of RAM will be lost when the computer is switched off as it needs power to store its RAM. Now one needs to think about what they're actually used for perhaps as my second point, rather than saying that ROM, whereas ROM is non-volatile, uh, perhaps I, I might want to just expand this out to get four marks and just explain what the other use of ROM is. So rather than kind of going, taking that first point and doing the opposite of it, which really isn't going to get me marks. If we look at the mark scheme, it's either or, you cannot have both. And you're not going to get four marks for doing that. What I've done is I've said ROM is smaller and used to store BIOS, which is basic input output system information. When the computer is first tied up, a small battery powers it. So ROM is used to store the basic inf information, basic input output system about the computer, the basic details of the computer, the hardware of the computer, its specifications that it needs when you power it up. And a small battery, if you look on your motherboard, you'll see a small battery, which is used to store that information constantly. Okay, so ROM is non-volatile, but I haven't written that there because I don't want to kind of make the examiner think that all I've done is kind of written the opposite of my first point, which isn't going to get me marks. ROM is smaller and used to store basic input output system information when the computer is first started up. A small battery powers it, and that's my answer there. Another two marks. E. Sashini chooses to recycle her old laptop. Describe two ways in which improper in disposal of digital devices could be harmful to human health. So a laptop is obviously full of chemicals. And one thing to start with to focus on is maybe the battery. The battery needs to be taken out and disposed of properly. So the battery is full of chemicals and should be taken out carefully and disposed of properly in the official recycle centre. It's also, it's also highly flammable. It's a fire hazard, so it needs to be stored off properly at an official centre. So just kind of made that point there, just added the highly flammable bit there, just to really drive that point home. Second point there, disposable devices which contain highly toxic materials in landfill could pollute the land, leaving it unusable in the future. So if the devices are just simply thrown into the ground, a hole in the ground, and then buried up again, that's called landfill, what all the chemicals in that laptop, and there's plenty in the creation of that laptop, there's plenty of chemicals in there that are going to leak into the ground over the years and make the ground unusable in the future. So it cannot be used for anything other than landfill. So it needs to be disposed of properly under the correct conditions. And that's what the question is asking me there. Let's scroll down and look at F. Which one of these is a type of storage media? Is it CD drive, magnetic tape, RAM, or solid state drive? Now, CD drive, we don't really use for storage. We're assuming that that's already, it's just a drive that plays CD. So that isn't a storage media. RAM, RAM isn't used by us for storage. It is used by the computer for its temporary instructions. Solid state drive is a type of storage media, but really, given the choice between magnetic tape and solid state, it's going to be magnetic tape. And I'm going to put that as my answer, B, magnetic tape. Why magnetic tape? Because magnetic tape, because it's larger. Companies, organizations will use magnetic tape as their backup. It does look like a tape, it's kind of like a sophisticated cassette tape that it's, it's very, very high capacity that is used for backing up large amounts of data. So given the choice there, it could be B or D, but for storage, you're always going to go, if you've got that option for magnetic tape, you're always going to go for magnetic tape because it's always going to be larger. G, the laptop can store 128 gigabytes of data. Construct an expression to show how many bits are in 128 gigabytes. A gibibyte is 1024 megabytes, and that is 1020 kibibytes, and that is 1024 bytes, and that is 8 bits in a byte. So I'm just going to write down that pyramid. Now I've done this question many, many times. It is very, very popular, so it's highly likely that in your exam you're going to get a question like this. Just a few points that we've gone over many, many times with these types of questions. You do not need to calculate it. It will ignore, the examiner will ignore any attempts that you have done to calculate it. And you haven't got to calculate it, so don't even bother. They're not even going to mark it. They'll probably just laugh at you for trying, okay? You're going to waste 
sort of 10 minutes trying to work it out. You'll probably get it wrong and you're not going to get any marks for it. So don't even try to calculate it. So let's have a look at this uh, kind of hierarchy here. The smallest amount of data we can have is a bit, which is either ones or a zero. It's either one or a zero. One byte is eight bits. One kibby byte is 1,024 bytes. One mebby byte is 1,024 kibby bytes. One gibby byte is 1,024 mebby bytes. And one tebby byte is 1,024 gibby bytes. And that's where we stop. We don't need to go higher than that for the specification. So let's do the calculation then. So first thing we need to write is 128, okay? Now, multiply by 1,024, okay? So 1,024 times 1,024 times 1,024, because we see there one gibby byte. Now I'd recommend in your exam that you write this out like I've written it there. One bit, one byte, one gibby byte. That's going to help you. So if I've got Gibby bytes, I can see that it's 1,024. I can count 1,024 three times, times 1,024, times 1,024. Or I could do it to the power of three. That's obviously 1,024 cubed. But I've counted 1,024 three times because it's a Gibby byte. If it was a Tebby byte, it would be 1,024 four times. And then I need to get it into bits. So I need to multiply it by eight and that is three marks and that is my expression there and I haven't tried to work it out I'm not going to try and work it out I'm not going to get any marks trying to work it out so that is the answer for G our last question H some people cannot go online because of their religious beliefs state to other causes of unequal access to ICT this is the digital divide and this is two marks so the first thing I've written is probably the obvious. It is lack of internet connection or very poor internet connection is one reason for unequal access. So that is probably the one of the most obvious ones. You just simply haven't got, got a very, very poor internet connection. Other things I could have, it may be lack of education, lack of understanding, lack of the funding to be able to, to purchase the internet connection in the first place. And my second point there, the cost of internet connectivity would also be a reason for unequal access. It's simply too expensive. And that completes question one, and that has a total of 21 marks. Thanks for watching this video. As always, please do a favour and like and subscribe. And we'll do the second question in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.